This is a Culture Inject production. All right, people, welcome back to another episode of Part of Us, an In Vogue fan cast. Before we get started, I want you to tell us where to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Invogue Craze and on Twitter at Part of Us Fancast. Stream Part of Us on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and everywhere podcasts are straight. Ideas, interview requests, comments, questions, email them to us at partofusevf at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, please rate and review our podcast. This week's episode is called Funky Divas, A Retrospective. But Yay! before <laughs> But before we get into that, we're gonna, you know, talk about spotlight some news and what's trending at the moment. Um, so thank you first off to those who have rated our podcast on Apple Podcast and left us a review. A couple of the reviews on Apple Podcast. There are five stars, so we thank you. Five out of five. I hope it's five out of five. I think it is. Yeah. First is from um uh um wazi. I hope I'm saying that tag correctly. That, that's not, actually that's actually a friend of mine who is listening. Hey, um, well, shout it's, out. It, her name is Angela. It's A Moazy. A yes. Oh, I like that. A Moazy. A Moazy. Okay, well, A Moazy <laughs> gave us five stars. Love this podcast of true fans. They are true fans that are so fun to listen to. Love it. So yes, we, we are true fans. Some people are out here faking, but we're the real deal. Exactly. <laughs> and the next review comes from Ladybug. And she also gave us five stars. She said, love it. Hilarious and great dialogue. We appreciate you guys for reviewing, giving us five stars. If you are listening, please do the same, you know, so we can get up on those charts and get and get more eyes on this amazing project we are doing for true Invoke fans. That's right. So we've been chatting with someone close to the ladies of Invoke. Uh, a confidential source, but we just learned that Miss Maxine is the director of liberal arts programming for a national human services nonprofit. It serves the needs of individuals with physical and intellectual disabilities. So kudos to Miss Jones for doing her good humanitarian services. Yes, Max, I Jones. love that. I love that. I love Ms. that. Miss Maxine Olivia. <laughs> 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 I love it. And we have an update on the 30th anniversary for Funky Divas. They have released the track listing for, for the Funky Divas Expanded Edition in celebration of, in, of Funky Divas 30th anniversary. Um, and I believe the last episode we had talked about what we wanted to see on this Expanded Edition. And unfortunately, what we, what, what we didn't want to see is what they're giving us. <laughs> 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 we are getting some remastered uh, uh, portions of songs that already exist and a lot more remixes for some of their singles. Uh, I was hoping for some new songs or maybe some unreleased tracks that maybe uh, was on the cutting room floor. And I was like, let's bring this thing back because it is kind of a bop. But we didn't get that, unfortunately. What do y'all think? You know what I really wanted? So I... I was hoping that one day we would get the full version of the theme song from Rock, the Live Your Life Today, Not For Tomorrow oh, yes. song. Yeah. And because there is a full version that's on YouTube, but it's like a rip from the radio. So you only, so like it has like the radio station name in it and all that stuff. But there is a full version with like two um, two verses and, you know, the hook and all that stuff. And I was hoping we can get that. Um, I was hoping we can get a full version of that, but you know, they gave us the remixes. <laughs> That's actually true because I think, um, is it the theme song they did for Hanging with Mr. Cooper? Does, is, doesn't that have a full version too? I haven't or heard it, it there is. Is it just a theme song? I don't know. I mean, it would be, cool. Only it would be the, cool. They only sing the hook on that. Uh, Don Lewis and Holly Robinson Pete sing the verses on that. On the show, I always thought I always figured it was like a like an actual in vogue version of that song, but I could be maybe I'm thinking of another thing that they did. But have you heard the full version of the rock theme song? I no, have. I haven't. I have not. 
I was in my life verse, today. <laughs> there's a man with no future. And then the second verse is about like the mom who gave up her career because her kids, you know, were young. She had kids and then she grew up and then she wanted to still live her dreams. And yeah, it's, it's nice. It's funky. It's definitely, you know, funky divas era. Well, yeah, we could we could have got that. Hey. <laughs> I mean, it I is cool. Like, it's cool to get like, you know, uh, a cool new project to celebrate their 30th anniversary because like I, like I always say Invoke fans we we show up you know we show up and somehow they always find themselves find a way to be a part of the conversation you know somehow some way so I mean it's a good look for them but and give also, me the music I, I noticed today that Miss Maxine Jones she posted about the 30th um, anniversary edition as well on her social media. So I and Don did cool. too. Don did as well. Well, I, I can't see Don, so I, you, <laughs> you can't. You can't see Don. You know what's funny is I saw uh, I saw another fan. Um, they said they saw the screenshot of Don posting it, and they said, <laughs> "This isn't shade for me, Don. I promise you." But the person has said, "I'm surprised y'all still." follow Dawn on Instagram because her stories since the pandemic have been real weird <laughs> and I'm like <laughs> I don't know what she be posting but I guess some people it be it the wrong way but I, I think it's cool that they also are posting the album as well but I, I, I was just gonna because the next story we're about to go into was trending um, it's a different group but I would just like that, you know, even if there is tension or bad blood or what have you, there are certain times where you should just be able to put that aside and commemorate something, particularly Funky Divas. That's like a milestone of their career. It's their biggest record. It's all of their biggest record where they're solo, whether in another group. So right. um, it'll be great if they can even do some press or interviews or even if it's like one of those documentary style things where it's one individual in front of a camera and they just put the, the clips together where they're talking about the record I you know they really should celebrate this one in one way or another um, 100% I, I would love a documentary about the, the Funky Divas album like the creation of it the ideas the writing you know it's, it's amazing that um, back in the day there were a lot of artists who did kind of um, video all of those moments you know like today you know we have cell phones and stuff so everyone's always Instagramming and live streaming or whatever but even back then a lot of you know um, producers and labels and artists they would really document you know that process like Mary J. Blige did it you know right. Janet mm-hmm. did it um, so I wonder if there's any behind the scenes footage that you know Denny or Tommy um, have from you know creating that album right if there is there is still time to to get it a part of that <laughs> album so we can have like a cute little maybe 10 15 20 minute dock you as an extra for like purchasing I don't know if there is footage there's still time it'll come out till March <laughs> right like I think it deserves more than just a digital release so hopefully they they have more planned than just releasing um, the album digitally not, not a physical copy and then with like remixes yeah. so that's my two cents on yeah, I know that um, um, Josh he we talked about it before like he uses the example like the Doobie Brothers and Michael McDonald like how you know he did their tour but they they're doing a new album without him because he's not officially a part of the group anymore. He's still solo. But I wouldn't mind like a, you know, in in light of the 30th anniversary, like maybe doing like a Funky Divas like acoustic set or something. I don't know, just a way for like the ladies to just do a performance together for the fans. Obviously, we got the EV5 for the Sylvia Roan, um, honoring Sylvia Roan. But that was mainly for that event. Luckily, they they got footage to post online, but I feel like it would be cool to kind of just get like a cool little, maybe just a one-off performance for the fans, you know, for the public to enjoy. Um, it, it, it's a it's a very very far fetched idea. <laughs> we won't hold our breaths on that, you know. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna exhale, but it will it will be cool. Maybe in the future, it will be it will be cool. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, bringing members together, <laughs> uh, we got some more trending girl group news. Uh, there's a story about Miss uh, Di Reed or D Reed from the group Jade. 
um, and they're kind of going through some some issues right now. So apparently, um, the other two ladies of Jade have reformed without her and she's publicly saying I want to be a part of it um, they won't call me they won't return my phone calls um, and she doesn't know why <laughs> and this, sad. yeah and this is really interesting though what I thought was really interesting about this is that she says that she actually owned the name Jade um, up until I think last year and then she added them she added the other two members their names uh, I guess to the um trademark right the trademark so she added the other two ladies names and right after that they kind of ceased communication and went on without her <laughs> wow <laughs> oh, no, that's shady that's very shady that is shady she held the trademark all those years when it was about to expire uh, I think she said she renewed it or whatever and she added their names to it because she had been in contact with one of the other ladies and that the lady the one in particular was saying you know oh I never want to mess with the other girl again da 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 next thing you know those two have gone on and, and reformed and they're touring and and Dee is like you know what's going on but luckily you know she has been busy like she's been singing background for years and so she's always really busy right um, with Rod Stewart and other people Steve, Stevie Wonder so she's definitely not you know broken destitute but you know, <laughs> she, <laughs> but no, she says that you know I mean she was pretty much the lead singer of the group and right and I think she wants for the fans to you know to have that moment but I was gonna say I'm not like a like I like Jade I like Don't Walk Away Boys definitely one of the greatest of the 90s but what I I haven't followed them but what I do remember is like they had a song and my years are off but it was sometime in the 2010s it was the two other ones Tanya and I believe Joy yes. they had this song called Baby Love Yeah. and I just remember them saying that like you know she does do a lot of work so that's why she wasn't with them because she was busy doing a lot of work with Rod Stewart and what have you but then recently there was that I forget that DJ Snake who does those long uh, mixes and then the people will come on and like sing parts of their songs. Oh, like I, on uh, the Soul Train thing, like um, yeah, DJ Cassidy. It's not DJ Cassidy, that's who it is. And so it was Die. I think it is Die Read. I've heard them say Die. Uh, okay, die, die. I know it was D or D. Die. <laughs> yeah, I always thought it was D. And then when I heard them say it, it was like, oh, it's not like that's different. Um, but yeah, so she was by herself doing Don't Walk Away. And then I saw, maybe you sent it, but then I saw the other two with someone from The Voice. And I was like, what is, oh, but and then remember, I don't know if you saw this clip, but then like SWV brought out Die and she was singing Don't Walk Away. Yeah. So they just need to like, I, and I know like I'm the one um, who's always saying I'm fine with the way the configuration is. Like I don't need the originals, but in this instance, I don't see what the issue is. Like she is the most visible, like that song, it's kind of like, we are family. It's their, we are family. It's their big song. So Kathy saying lead on, we are family. Di saying lead on, don't walk away. So like you kind of need her. Like it just is strange. Uh, but like I said, I don't know their ins and outs. And um, the quote says, she says, I will keep the mics warm for Tanya and Joy. I will never say never. Um, no matter what happens going forward, I want our fans to know that I tried. This is not about slandering anyone. Um, none of that matters. If I love you, I'll always love you. Oh, well, I hope they work it out because, I mean, what else they got to do? But <laughs> at least you take at least she at least she's taking the high road and being classy about it. Right. She's like, she pretty much is saying, I let them be in their feelings, and when they and then when they come in their senses, I'll be ready. <laughs> right. But that trademark was just that trademark news is very interesting. Um, it's it's always interesting um, when these different groups and how that works out is it, it's very interesting. Groups, bands, it's like if they've been around long enough, there's going to be an issue with somebody try to have two versions of the group. There's going to be an issue of the trademark. There's going to be something, even if it's sisters, like Sister Sledge or the emotions, there's going to be some type of drama. But we wish them all well. We hope, we hope that they can work it out. And we're going to segue back into 
in vogue and I just want to say uh, I miss Josh so much just because he is like the Don Cornelius the Donnie Simpson he just has such a, a wonderful voice and hearing him read you know the blurbs and things like that it's just like a an experience but I'm gonna try to read something as good as he does I know I'm not gonna be able to but this next item is it's EVTV 2022 in the month of February 2022 alone, and both music has been featured in the top-rated shows, King of Napa, uh, they play Don't Let Go on that show, and Euphoria, you know, the Zendaya show on HBO. I guess there was a scene where the mother of uh, one of the characters was dancing to My Lovin'. You're never going to get it. <laughs> and to top it all off, My Lovin' was featured in General Motors' Super Bowl marketing campaign for its electric vehicles. Michael Myers, um, he was reprising his role as Austin Powers' villain Dr. Evil and he sang and danced to the 1992 hit My Lovin' You're Never Gonna Get It Never Gonna Get It Never Gonna Get It um, and so the question is what product would you like to incorporate in Vogue's music or the divas themselves into its advertising Cheetos Doritos Fritos I feel like if you're creative enough you can put their songs in anything honestly it could it can work for fashion it could work for for uh, a car commercial it could work for Put their music in. Put their music in everything. Put it in everything. I love the fact that because when I saw, um, yeah, it's true. Like when I watched Euphoria, I was like, oh wait, they're in Vogue. And then when I watched the Super Bowl, I was like, he did not make an in Vogue reference. And it was hilarious the banter between him and Seth Green back and forth or whatever. So I thought that was really really cute. Once again, in Vogue just. It, it, in Vogue resonates more than people I feel like would like to admit or give them credit for but they just resonate their music um, what they've done like their staple in pop music is just it resonates and it, it, to this day still I love it but okay yeah. sound alarms we have a new music alert or is it a false flag producer Matt Cody whose most notable credit is Scissors Love Galore hinted he is mixing an, an in vogue project so give me a paper towel give me another volume give me another hour or two we'll find out if it's true and we'll report back you know i saw that tweet and so when i went to his page he also tweeted something else and he said it's a temptations and in vogue type of day so it kind of made me feel as if perhaps he is doing a song and using a sample from their music but probably not producing new music for them. Because when he said Temptations, I was like, Temptations? <laughs> or maybe In Vogue is doing a song, maybe they're doing a new song and they're using a Temptation sample. It, it could, it's either or, but I know, you know, producers, they, they, they love you with the samples from old school music. So I wouldn't be surprised if he was producing a track for like a current artist and he was using samples from their discography. But if it's new music, I'm here for it. Funky Divas, a retrospective. Album history, Funky Divas was released on March 24th, 1992. So the album is an Aries, <laughs> if that makes <laughs> sense. <laughs> it debuted at number one on the US the Billboard Top RB Albums chart and at number eight on the Billboard 200 while peaking at number four on the UK Albums chart. It incorporates RB, soul, pop, and rock. Like Invoke's previous album, Born to Sing, Funky Divas explores themes of love, romance, as well as social issues. 
It is certified three times platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America, selling over 3.5 million copies in the United States. These figures, however, do not include albums sold through clubs like BMG Music Club, where it sold 916,000 copies. Combined, Funky Divas has sold over 4.4 million copies in the U.S., period. Update those certs, Rhino. Mm. Love it. And Funky Divas featured five singles, all of them top 40. My Love It, You're Never Gonna Get It, which was, I think, peaked at number two, giving them something he can feel. Number six, Free Your Mind. Number eight, Give It Up, Turn It Loose. I don't really remember 15. if it was 14 or 15. Okay, 15. And Love Don't Love You, maybe 36, but they're all top 40 hits with five top 40 hits off of one album. They don't make them like that anymore. No, they don't. Internationally, the Funky Divas reached the top 40 of the national album charts in Canada and the Netherlands, New Zealand, and Sweden. The album reached its biggest peak in the United Kingdom, where it peaked at number four on the UK albums chart and reached gold status. So, um, I bet you didn't know, number one, the record label didn't like the direction they were going with this album. Denny and Tommy wanted to expand the group's sound catalog with dance, dance hall, and even rock tracks. The record label wanted another album in the vein of Born to Sing, straight up R&B, but they stuck to their guns and the result was a nearly five times platinum album in Vogue's biggest. What do you guys think? I just feel like these big execs... If you're going to sign and entrust these creatives with the direction of music, trust them with the direction of music. Think of Beyonce as an example. When she debuted Dangerously in Love for her record company, they said she didn't have any hits. But then all her singles were number one. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like it doesn't hurt to trust, you know, people's creative vision if they're trying to evolve or go in a different direction. You know, um, I mean, because obviously it paid off because most of these songs on this album are is what is, are, are the staples of what keep them in pop culture. All these songs like literally are the ones that are in being uh, having placements in 2022, you know, so to me, when I listen to Funky Divas, I don't think it's a big departure from Born to Zing. I, I, to me, they sound very much on the same um, in the same realm to me. The only thing is uh, Born to Sing doesn't have a song like Free Your Mind, but to me, everything else can pretty much be interchangeable with Born to Sing. Like, I really don't hear uh, much of a difference. Like, sonically, like, at the at the core of, of the album. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's 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 all very New Jack Swing. You know, I'm, well, I do know that Desire is a bit different. You know, that's more of a dance hall feel. I mean, there, yeah, Desire and then What Is Love is more of a straight-up house record, but... Right. And then, everything and then, else you is, know, is pretty much... Don rapping. Don rapping, I feel like maybe that was like, oh, but they're not a rap group. They're R&B. So I, I guess at the time, maybe the maybe the direction that the Denny and Tommy were trying to go at the time can be perceived as like, this is too much of a deviation. But I'm like, it, 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 the album is super cohesive to me. Like it all, it all makes sense and it goes well together. So whoever these record, whoever was on a record label board, jokes on you. Ha ha ha. <laughs> um, at the time of its release, Funky Divas received a mixed reception from music critics. Surprisingly but has since earned retrospective acclaim and recognition from musicians and producers. Praised for In Vogue's vocal work and the production's definitive character, it is often cited to have paved the way for other female bands. The album became the quartet's second album to earn a Grammy Award nomination in the Best R&B Performance category by a duo or group with vocals. While winning the American Music Award for Favorite Soul R&B Album and the Sammy Davis Jr. Award for Entertainer of the Year at the 1993 Soul Train Music Awards. Entertainment Weekly writer Arian Berger, or Berger, sorry, young man, um, he felt that Funky Divas delivers flirtatious R&B set to a mechanized beat. The four sweet voice members of En Vogue are versatile enough to handle reggae, gospel, and doo-wop tinted dance music with game, if not very deep enthusiasm. 
Peep Magazine wrote that In Vogue succeeds best at light, danceable funk embroidered with soaring, swooping vocals. Maybe the album title promises a bit... Oop! Maybe the album title promises a bit more than what's delivered, but spunky hip-hop gals who can sing their fannies off would have been just too long, we guess. Okay. Now, hold on, Peep Magazine. Hold on. I see you didn't name yourself, whoever wrote that. Hidden as you should be. (laughs) I Okay, so... Before I go on to the next part, it's interesting because we were just talking about how they wanted the label wanted more R and B, and I'm thinking back to this interview that SWV did on this show called Lorna's Corner, and Lorna, who was like this lady who I guess did like uh, interviews and like the projects or in the community center or something, but it was just like her and the camera, and she was explaining that some people think if you're not singing songs like Whitney or Luther, you're not really a singer, and so just reading that comment, it's like. You know, all like, can you not hear the intricacies and the harmonies and the big swooping vocals? So how are they not divas then? Is it because they're not singing power ballads on the record? Right. Um, so I can kind of see why they maybe the, the label wanted to kind of push in that more Adele contemporary type of, uh, vein because that was what was really selling. And that's who people consider to be like the premier singers were the ones who were singing those kind of, you know, uh, slower, songs, the ballads and the, you know, the love takes times and you were my strength when I was weak and that type of stuff. But, <laughs> but, um, all music, uh, all music Joseph F. Promise wrote that combining sass, elegance, and class with amazing vocals and perfect production, this delightful set stands as one of the 1990s definitive pop albums. He found that the album is basically free of filler and called it the era's most diverse, dazzling, and exciting pieces of work. And see, that's retrospective. So like I said in a previous episode, a lot of times history is revisionist. So when you see something successful, you know, people are going to try to change their tune a little bit. But Rolling Stone in 2011, uh, Rolling Stone magazine ranked the album 60th on its list of the 100 best albums of the 1990s and second best albums of the 1990s by female group. So it's one of the 100 best albums of the 90s, according to Rolling Stone. I want to re- I want to revisit that that list um, sometime and be like, should they be higher? <laughs> I feel like they should, but you know. Yeah, I think sixty is a little too low. But the nineties, I mean, it was a great decade for music. So, and then Rolling Stone is more so geared towards rock and roll. So I'm sure like Nirvana was probably number one, and Pearl Jam and all of those people. So for them to even make the list, and I think I remember. Someone complaining that like Green Day made it, but some, you know, people, some people don't really take R&B seriously. Like they think everything has to be, uh, you know, like kind of that rock type of angst and all of that stuff. So I'm happy right. they made the list, but it definitely should be higher. But like I said, that's not Rolling Stone. It's not really the demographic, I don't think. But the album itself, musically and visually, invoke upped their game with this album with the music genres, with the lyrical messages, and definitely the fashion. Uh, it's just one of my favorite. I think EV3 is my favorite era fashion-wise, but then Born to Sing, I can see why. Like, it's a, a, su- such a close second. Um, and what do you guys think sets this album apart from Born to Sing? Well, I mean, for me, like I said, it's, it's, very, it's very similar to Born to Sing to me. I just think it's kind of like an elevated version of it. You know, I think it's probably a little bit more mature, in a lot of ways, it's it's kind of there's some more sensual parts and songs like giving them something you can feel and desire. Yeah, it's kind of like born to sing, grown up. <laughs> I agree. I think like that's what we were talking about when we did the born to sing retrospective, and I said it's good to have progression. So the first album cover, I never really thought too much about it one way or the other. I just thought they all looked beautiful, but then I can see why people can say, oh, okay, well, it wasn't a great album cover. But Funky Divas, like just the booklet itself, the booklet alone, it was just like everything about it. It was like, we know who we are. We know what we're about to do. It's just the, the, the presentation of everything. And so while I think like uh, it, it ain't over to the fat lady sings, could have been a born to sing. Well, I think... You know, like even yesterday, could, you know, could have been on uh, Born to Sing because they had Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy instead. It's like, you know, the covers. Right. Um, I, I just feel like this one, 
there was just a lot more confidence, a lot more boldness, and uh, you know, and just really the presentation I think is what made them superstars. So not even so much. I mean, the music is great. Obviously, we just talked about you know how it's still being used, but I think their presentation set them apart with the music videos. I remember being obsessed with uh, "My Love and You're Never Gonna Get It," and really all of them I remember giving him something he could feel like that did something to everybody probably like everybody was stopping oh, yes. to you know watch that video there wasn't so a man know. there wasn't a straight man in America who was not foaming at the mouth for that song <laughs> like I remember being a kid and being in the barber shop and like the guys were just talking about that video like it was, <laughs> like I know like they were it was it was a very interesting time and you really don't see a lot of moments like that anymore where culturally it's like everyone is talking about it you know what I'm saying like from right. your, from your mom and dad to your little brother and your cousins your aunties your ne- you know what I'm saying like everyone is like was in on the conversation with this um, era for in vogue. And they really up the ante with the visuals too. Like if you look right. at the visuals from Born to Sing to Funky Divas, like everything, like you can tell that budget, you know, that's why they had no money in the bank because the <laughs> because they had the best hair, makeup, clothes, photographers, directors, like they really, you know, they really did it. I just thought that the the progression of each single choice, it just showed how versatile the ladies are when it comes to not just their vocals, but how they can just be chameleons and give you something different. And each song, I feel like it it kind of has a shotgun effect that attracts a different type of uh, type of listener, you know. Right. Um, so I, I, yeah, I feel like uh, my loving that definitely uh, satisfies the palate of already Evie fans from the first album, but then you give you you know, you do give them something he can feel, you're like, oh wow. They said <laughs> it, it, men, you can be a fan of a female artist too. And so that was that. <laughs> it kinda I feel like it kinda I feel like in the Born to Sing era, they had moments where it was like, oh, they're sexy. But I feel like it was like they were being young and hip and cool. But I feel like this really solidified them as like you know, being able to sex be sex symbols. symbols. I mean, you know, they, mm-hmm. they, they really became sex symbols. I wish they would have expanded on that a little bit more, like really yes. leaned into that a little bit more, you know, like to what it really means to be like a true sex symbol. Like they really, yeah, I, I think, but cause I think in Vogue always had, you know, they always did a good job with like being classy yet sexy at the same time. So I guess they didn't want to push it too far. We you know, I think Cindy's kind of uh-huh. conservative and, um, I guess Terry's like a, a southern gal and all, but <laughs> <laughs> right. but it would have been nice to see them kind of lean a little bit more, like kind of. What does that mean? Just lean into it. Like I think Janet is one of the few black artists, black female artists that I think really leaned into the the sex icon or or you know the sex symbol status and like well, Little Kim, not going that far, but just you know. Yeah, I don't. I don't think the ladies. I don't think the ladies have really had any other like songs that were like very sensual or or talking about sex like this song. I don't think that they have any other songs like that. Well, you know, you you can you can be sexy at any moment though. It doesn't matter the song. You find your moments. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I just think about how iconic like that sexy red dress was for In Vogue. You know what I mean? Like that 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 was truly a moment. Like In Vogue is synonymous for that red dress. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like And you know that the rehearsals to get though that that uh that glove routine for the music, bait the gloveography <laughs> of it all. <laughs> Like, they hear everything about it when it's iconic. And and then going from giving him something he can feel to free your mind, one, it has a social justice message, which I think is dope. And just them, you know, being unapologetic about being black women in this space, I think is super powerful. But then to go to the concept of the video itself, I feel like, I feel like the gays look crazy. Like, it's like the hair, the outfits, the 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 eight count. I feel like 
if that video came out today, it would still feel current. It still looks good today. Like, that is one video um, that still looks like it could come out today and it would still slay. Yes. And it, and I, and I feel like they also gave such a variety of fashion you know, being in vogue, you know, from each video. It was like, dang, they're giving like so many different type of looks, you know. That's so very, I, that's I, very true. Yeah. That is very true. They yeah, they really and then after give it after uh Free Your Mind was give it up, turn it loose, which was a like, totally like a throwback um what was it, like a nineteen fifties look? I think so because there was something about Kennedy, and I think he's the 50, so yeah, 50s. Yeah, like, yeah, they really did. But since we were talking about their singles, really quick, y'all, do you, would you have changed anything? You got to pick these singles. Like, how would you guys have done it? Because I've been thinking about this all week. <laughs> okay, I, 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 I'm so happy you asked that because, okay, so they got it. They hit the nail on the head with My Love Me Never Gonna Get It. Mm-hmm. That's the perfect first single. And uh, I think if it had been anything else, I don't think anything would have had the impact. Like, if they came out with Free Your Mind, that probably would have alienated mm-hmm. um, some of, you know, their core fan base. And it's kind of like, even though whatever was an R&B song, I think with the video, uh, if you're an R&B act, people are not used to seeing you like that. That could kind of, like, turn them off. And I think that's the issue with whatever, even though it was an R&B track, it was the video, like an R&B audience, you know, BET, Planet, oh, Network, yeah. it was a video still back then. Like, that, you know, um, so My Love Perfect first video, giving him something he can feel like that was a perfect second single because it was like I think the video if there was no video I don't know if it would have been as big as a hit as it was but MTV was playing like straight up R&B like that's a Curtis Mayfield song like MTV was playing it BT was playing it just because of how visually stunning it was and it is a great song it's one of my favorites by them and then then like okay you kind of solidified it because you're an R&B act you've done uh, My Level which is funky you've done uh, give it up, up, giving giving him something he, he can feel, which is straight up R and B. Then you can go and do a free your mind. So that was perfect sequencing. Um, I love give it up, turn it loose, but I feel like that's a fifth single. I think the fourth mm-hmm. should have been something that was up to like love don't love you. Mm-hmm. I think that love don't love you still went to like uh, top forty without a video. Even hmm. though some people, I think there was a European fan who said there was like some type of video that they showed in Europe where it was like a, a montage of the previous videos, but in the US there was no video. I feel like if they would have promoted that single, that would have been an easy top 10 and then hmm. close out the era with Give It Up Turn It Loose because it's such a, like a breezy, and it's a departure because everything else was so high energy and then like they're kind of coming out, you know, real laid back and it was just a very beautiful, relaxing track. But to me, it's more so like close out the album with that. They, if, with the fourth single, if it was Love Don't Love You, that would have been an easy top 10. Agreed. I, I honestly, I wouldn't have minded What Is Love being released as a single just as a way to pierce the dance charts you know Mm. what i mean um because it it has being in the 90s it just has that feel you know what i mean and i feel like if they did make it a single it probably would have a lot of placements too like i think about movies like night at the roxbury with will ferrell like how that could have been you know in in that 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 song could have been a part of that, you know, a, a project like that, or just it could have had like so many remixes with DJs that it would have had a a, a good shelf life in the future. But I would have chose "What Is Love" as like a single, maybe a promotional single or something like that. It was a promotional single. <laughs> well, then an, an, an official single. Then, like, I yeah, think I that would have been, been official- for them. Where would you have placed it? I would have placed. I would have made it made it last. I would have made it last just as a because I, I feel like free your mind is such a deviation from their their original sound you know but it was received so well so I feel like okay you know what this was received well let's do what is love and give them something different again you know and maybe it'll allow not maybe but it, it would allow audiences um, to see them in another light you know I'm like why why not why not cover our bases you know we gave them phone exactly. we gave them rock we gave them R&B we gave them you know sex we gave them future future Afro 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 futurism free your mind video you know let's give them some dance too like why not you know um, so I would have made that a single as well 100% I think most of the most of the songs could have been 
some sort of single, right? So, I mean, that's one of the difficult choices you have to make when you have a good album, you know, figuring out how do you, you know, what's the order. Only thing that I would have done differently, I wouldn't have done giving him something he can feel second. I would have done that third. And for second single, for me, I'm thinking some, I'm thinking Love Don't Love You for the second mm-hmm. single. Like, keep the energy high. It's very performance-driven. It's very, like, you know, we're still on our pro- promotional run. You know, everyone loves the up-tempo, you know, to perform. You know, then give him, give him something he can feel. And then for the fourth single, Free Your Mind, right? I would do that as, like, the main single. But I also would have done Hip Hop Lover for, like, the R&B charts. Because, mm. I mean, R&B stations were not playing Free Your Mind. Even though it was a huge pop crossover record and still there was still an audience not being served and I would have went with Hip Hop Lover for that one and then close it on I would give it up turn it loose they ended that era so quickly like they could have done a lot more with it instead of going into um Run, the run, Runaway Love EP. I mean, I know like Salt and Pepper, of course, they invite you on the track, you want to do the track, but they could have still been promoting, um, you know, if Funky Diva's like just four singles when it was doing so well and they're still, yeah. you know, they wanted to tour and all that stuff like it. I, well, see, now that, I don't know if that's management or if that's the label or. Well, that's management. Okay, yeah. When it so comes to then, touring, I mean, they weren't in the 360 deal. So that's a management issue. Luther, Luther told them, your management got y'all to sign this deal. <laughs> <laughs> so the fact that they were not on their own world tour, but also Cindy was pregnant. So, I mean, so when, when one of your singers gets pregnant in the middle of your biggest album, I mean, that's definitely going to kind of... Yeah, you're going to have a DVA Slow some kind things of way. down a bit, you know what There I mean? was a Funky Divas tour, and uh, I think Arrested Development opened for them. And I even, when R. Kelly, I saw article R. Kelly even opened for In Vogue on the Funky Divas tour at one point. So there was a Funky Divas tour. Was that before or after Luther? It was before Luther. It was probably around 1992, uh, maybe the okay, yeah, okay, 1992. Okay. And then... After uh, Funky Divas, I guess they had stopped with the promotion of Funky Divas. And then you're getting into the summer of 93, I want to say. And then you have uh, the Runaway Love, which I'm sure we'll do a whole episode on, like, I guess maybe the hiatus period, Runaway Love and the hiatus. But there was that and What a Man. And so around that time, that's when they're on tour with Luther. But all I'm, what I'm just trying to say is that, like, I wish the era could have maybe not even been longer, but they could have just done more with it. Like, you know, like I remember down the summer saying she was very upset with Casablanca records because her, the song that she wrote herself, like she was the sole writer of it. Um, what is that song called? Turn my brown body. What? What is it? Dim all the lights. She had written dim all the lights. And then the label, put out I think I want to say maybe no more tears enough is enough or something and so Dim All the Lights got stopped at number two and she had another song at number one but she was mad because like the song she wrote she wrote her heart out for that song it Mm -hmm. got stalled by another one of her songs so right the record company, I, in this case, to me, they're a little bit too lax. It's like, you have this big record. Like, I would be like, okay, I don't care what you're doing. We need you to record another video. Like, there was so much more life in the album. And so they just have four singles, or four main singles, because I know, like, I think What Is Love, or, well, five, but one, the fifth single didn't have a video. And then What Is Love was promotional. I think it went top 10 on the dance charts. And I love the remix of it, but it's just like, there was just so much more life there to, to you to just do four videos and, you know, not really even promote Give It Up, Turn It Loose. Like, what were the big performances besides the inauguration where was the Friday there Melody? no other performances right. of that record. And I remember loving that record. I was, I remember, like, being at my aunt's house and seeing that video on BET and going, oh, my God, it's a new in vogue. And it's different. I remember thinking, like, it's different. What are these outfits? Like, they were just the whole moment. They look great. Right. right. Even, but- even, even, um... I feel like hooked on your love could have got a little bit life, a little bit of life as well. Very Cause true. I, cause Very I true. love that. So, I mean, well, one, I love the original Sparkle movie. I love that, you know, and so I used to live for the performances that the sisters would do at the nightclub. And that was one of my favorite, uh, when they performances. Were sneaking out and drugging, yes! drugging the mama. <laughs> and they right. were sneaking on out. <laughs> 
Like, I love that. So I'm like, I feel like they could have did something with that too. Like, even give it, like, even if you don't make What of Love a single, you could do, give him something he can feel. And then, like, after whatever other singles, do like a, a video for Hooked on Your Love to kind of give that same type of sexy, sultry, like, like a continuation, just, yeah. like a part two. Like, I man, really that would have like been cute. The, did they did they perform that like whenever y'all saw them saw them live before? Hooked I've on never love? seen I've never seen the performers of Hooked on Your Love. I would love I've to seen see a performance Terry, of that. Well, not Terry. I've seen the group do it when I saw them. I want to say at the Saban Theater in 2014. Okay. And Terry, I mean, she was still in. Um, not to say that she's not in good voice now, but I, I see a difference from the last time I saw them and the last time I saw them, it was outside. So I know that <laughs> I'm not trying to be shady. I'm just saying like that can make a difference. And I mean, there's wearing chair like 2014. That's now what? Eight years ago. But in 2014, she sounded so good and her, like her voice, it was just so resonant and full. And she did. Like they did a lot of stuff. Like they did Riddle. Rona sounded very good on Riddle. But anyway, back to in your love. Terry did do it and she sounded good. Now, during their peak, that's when it would have made the most sense to do it though, because that's selling the record. But I love that idea where like there could have been a give it give give <laughs> not give it, giving him something he can feel. And then like, you know how these artists they have like these super long videos. They could have just did something with like in the dressing room or something right. singing that song. Yeah. They could have like, they made a mini movie. Like exactly. you know, I, I wonder though, because Cindy and Terry were so heavily featured on the first album, do you think it was a conscious decision? to feature Maxine and Don more for Funky Divas? Like, do you think yes. that was like... I mean, because I've never heard anyone outright say it, but it feels very much so like that was what was going on. Because honestly, as much as I love Give It Up, Turn It Loose, like, that is probably my all-time favorite in Vogue song. It doesn't make for the best single. Right. right. And so I just wonder, like, did someone say, okay, we got to get Maxine a solo? Like we gotta, we gotta release her solo record because, you know, she hasn't had a solo, you know, a lead on her own. You know what I mean? I because to I me, know what you mean. I- "Hooked on Your Love" w- was definitely more of an obvious single choice. And I remember back in the day, like, and Matan, you may remember. Um, back in the Invoke Street Team days on hey. Yahoo groups, <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like. Was, were Denny and Tommy active in that chat? Because I feel like I remember asking, I remember someone talking to both of one of them, like back then. And I remember someone asking something along the lines of like, how do you pick who sings what? And I remember them saying like, it was basically based on whoever, um, whoever we felt fit the song the most. And I always felt like give it up. I always felt like hooked on your love and giving him something he can feel. I always felt like those two songs were interchangeable. Mm-hmm. Like uh-huh. I felt like you could release either one of those. I mean, they're both songs from the Sparkle soundtrack. Um, they're both R&B heavy, you know, ballad, you know, slow jams or whatever you want to call it. And I remember asking, like, well, why did y'all, how did you pick Don to sing that one versus Terry when literally they both come from, you know, they're Curtis Mayfield written records. Um, So how did you get to that conclusion? And I don't remember what the answer was, but I always felt like, (laughs) to make a long story short, I always felt like, um, I wonder, was this album really supposed to be like more of a feature for Don and Maxine because... Terry and Cindy got so much feature on the first one. I think it was, but I don't, you know, Maxine, she doesn't even have an ego because there's an article that I saw during the Funky Divas era where she was saying she thinks Love Don't Love You is a solid single and that's what she would pick and she doesn't have a lead on that. So I'm thinking it probably was maybe more so Tommy and Denny. I do remember them saying something along the lines of we wanted to show that all of the girls were leads mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. so that, you know, not just Cindy and Terry. Right. I 
I bet you didn't know that Denzel Foster and Thomas McElroy originally envisioned the breakdown for my Levin as something entirely different from the acapella version we've come, we've all come to know and love. Initially, the breakdown was get up off of that thing, a sort of spoken word piece over top funky beats. Now it's time for a breakdown. In Vogue recorded that version and even performed it at the 35th Annual Grammy Awards. They, mm-hmm. was, they later changed the breakdown after inspiration struck. Our listeners can hear the original breakdown for My Lovin' in the My Lovin' Morning After Mix on YouTube. Uh, what do you guys think of the original breakdown? I will say, I I enjoy the newer... I, I think the newer version is so iconic. Like, they did a solid by changing it. It's so iconic. Absolutely. Like even when you watch their um uh, like their more their more more recent performances of my love and even like when they perform it at uh the Apollo, um I think what was it, twenty eighteen maybe? Uh, but just like that that um breakdown and when they let the audience do the whoa 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 I mean, it's, it's just like you cannot love it and then they kind of and then they kind of redo it like a couple more times because it's such it's just such a, a dope groove when the music comes in too so i'm like it was a great choice to change it so that grammy's performance i've only watched a few times because i hated it so much i mean i'm like why are you lip syncing what is happening why are we doing this? Like, where's the microphone? It was too much. Like, I just wasn't into it. So I don't even remember how that sounds, to be honest with you. But I have to say this. You got to give Don Robinson her flowers for woo, 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 woo. Like, yes. that is iconic. That is iconic. You have to give her her flowers for woo, 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 woo. Yeah, it is like, like... She's the only one who could do that. No one else the, can no do it. No one can do it, but Don... No one can do it but Don. I always, and I always wonder, like, when they're in a studio, like, because I know you have, like, artists who are great at ad libs. You also have vocal producers who come in and say, well, do this this way. Or you have producers who have something in their mind. So I, I do wonder, like, who is the one who was, like, do the woo, 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 woo? Who, whose idea was it? Was it Dawn at living herself? Was it Tommy and Tommy and Denny? Or was it a vocal producer? Like I always wonder because that is it's just such an iconic little little doo that I'm I think. Sure, they said it got to be Dawn and Maxine because I mean it was there. You know they were the two leads, and that's what I also love about the fact that when it's four of you, it's really easy to be like, okay, two need to sing lead, and you know two not. Versus when it's three of you, it's like, okay, we don't want to leave one to be left out on their own to not have anything to, you know, to be heard in a featured moment. Right. I'm so, happy you brought that up. Listen, I've been thinking about this a lot because <laughs> I've been thinking about it because I'm just like, I love it. Because even if you listen to like, what is love or love don't love you, like it was always either one or two people singing lead. You know, trying to get that when you have three members, it's like, well, we don't want to leave her out. We got to find something. Uh, I'm not a fan of that, but anyway. I'm not either. And then, like, with my loving, it's like, okay, Maxine has the verses. Don has, I don't know if it's the bridge or the B section. I don't know. I think it's, I think it's like the the pre chorus or something. Okay, pre chorus. Yeah. So it's like, you know, they're playing off each other. There's a reason why. And then like all of the songs where there's most people singing, like, okay, Desire, Cindy has the, ver- well, Terry has the first verse, Cindy has the second verse. What is love? They're kind of going back and forth. Love don't love you. They're going back and forth. It's very special and it should be mm-hmm. like a very special, rare event when there's all four people on one track. 
Yes. And yes. now with the, with the current lineup, and even before starting from, I guess, EV3, where everybody has a part, like that just psychologically, I think it does something. It's like, if like, I will always love you, you had, you know, someone come in at the big part of the, like, it just kind of throws you off. So like, they yes. need to like, do more solos. And then when you do have more, to have two people on the track and let it be like a B section or a pre-chorus or a bridge or something like, don't just have everybody. It throws off the psychology of the song. Everybody yeah. don't need to be heard as a featured yeah. vocalist. I want to hear you in the background. So let's right. focus on the backgrounds. So let's make sure yeah. we're in the harmony. Harmony. Let's make sure we hit the three parts, but everybody don't need a verse. We don't right. need to do that. Because I, I feel like it also is. It, it's also like a kind of like stage training as well. It's like if you allow just one one girl out the group to just do her lead and just and just take control of the stage. It like it it helps her as like a performer because she's not like okay, I'm gonna do this real quick and then get back to the A count, you know. And it also like. It, Cause you know, obviously, like in the era, you have one lead, and then the girls will be in the back doing choreography, being sexy. I feel like those moments are also iconic too. Like when you kind of see, you know, Maxine doing my loving, and Dawn, Cindy, and Terry in the back, like doing doing the choreography and like being sexy. Like those moments are powerful too. So I feel like I don't I don't mind it just being like this song. And this song is Cindy's, and that's Cindy's song, and it, it, I'm I'm okay with it. Everybody don't have to have. A, a lead where you know or even like with Desi's Child like you have like Beyonce has a verse then Kelly has a pre-chorus and then you bring Michelle on the bridge and it's kind of like yeah you know Beyonce just sing the song <laughs> just sing the, it's, it's okay well, I don't I'm okay need with to hear that. her sing all the songs but okay. yeah. <laughs> I can do without I don't need to hear that yodeling all up and through <laughs> never gonna get it 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 never gonna get it, never gonna get it. The album cover is it iconic or iconic? It's Absolutely. iconic. It's iconic. <laughs> <laughs> it is iconic. I feel like that album cover is like it's just so special, especially like making it black and white. Or, or like, what, what is that filter called? Is, is, called, is that sepia? Like it, what, yeah, what, that, that, fi- that filter, like it, it just adds a, 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 a real je ne sais quoi to, to the album cover. You know, I, I love it. I think it's, I think it's great. Their outfits look amazing. The bustiers and the, and Stunning. the, and the, and the boobs are sitting. The boobs are sitting. You know, um, I love it. I think the album cover is iconic for sure. I'm I'm looking up because I have the poster right here in front of me, and like, it is just the best album cover from a girl group ever. Like, Absolutely. it is yes. everything. These berets, the bustiers, the pinstripes, and the slits. Like, everyone has a slit in the skirt, but the tops are all different. Everything. Yeah, I think they're wearing. Terry Mugler and oh, like, is that Mugler? I'm 100 percent sure it's Mugler, and it is just like it, budget. to me. It tells us right exactly that's having a budget is such a wonderful thing, but it just like tells a story to me too. Like it's like they could be like uh, champs at Je ne sais quoi. It's like maybe they're strolling the champs Elysee or somewhere in the old world Parisian. You know, maybe they're going yes. to a nightclub in the yes. jazz age of the 1920s. They're going to see Josephine <laughs> yes. Baker or something. Just yes. the shadows and the lighting. Just all of it. It's just like, there's a story there which... It, it, ha- it has like old school Hollywood... Um- like air to it like Marilyn Monroe Josephine Baker type but then it also like you said it has that like that European that Parisian like New York fashion week like we're about to sit on the front row with Anna Wintour like that's what I get from them my only my only uh small small uh nitpick is like I wish that Terry and Cindy weren't like holding like arm, arm locks interlock I wish that wasn't it I wish I wish it was I mean, like but it's it's very fitting though. It's very <laughs> like I mean it tells the story. It it really tells the story if you look at it does tell the story. story. But I mean I I it will you will you look at if you cut off like 
if you cut off where their hands are and it's, you just see Cindy, Don, and Maxine, it's like, it's like a runway walk. You know what I mean? And then, but when you, I feel like it's like, oh, hey, we're posing and we're, we're sisters. We stand together. We make up one big family. No, we don't look the and same. I'm, I might sound petty for saying this, but I have to talk about Maxine and Don ate Terry and Cindy up in this picture. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes, them they did. right on up. Darn. I mean, because Cindy has always been so pretty to me, but Cindy looks like an orphan to me in this picture. Like, I don't know what she's doing. Terry's mug I is I think right. it's the light. Terry's mug is correct, but Maxine and his finger wave, like, For she sure. is giving it I to would me. Even, I would even, you know what? I would love for uh, In Vogue as they, or if they continue touring, like, for them to do a whole bunch of remixed versions of their old iconic outfits. You know what I mean? Like, I would love for them to do like a performance in these out, in like a, these outfits or something similar to it. Cause it is just, it's just right. Like, it's just right. Like, and, and Dawn, Dawn is just serving. She is serving the, 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 uh, the little, the hip. The hip to the side, the arm, you know, the fedora, the bob, like the 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 dark lip. It's just it's just right. Um, I do wish that that uh, Cindy's eye line was the same as the other girls. Right, you know, she looking it, over yonder. You I don't know, know what's going on. I, I feel, and I, I do think like, lighting was a factor though, because being that Cindy is so light, and she she does seem very washed compared to the other brown ladies in the group but um and then I, I i would i would have loved to see like another uh another photo where maybe like they were all posing like in different in different parts of this of this set wherever it is you know just kind of give like a variety of stuff you know there is another um, photo i've seen recently of just uh i mean it's the same background but they're like in a different pose. It's like they're like two and two um, or something like that. Yeah, I think that was on my love and single cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. Yeah, this it's. I mean, I'm just looking. I pulled out the vinyl. I'm looking at. It. I still haven't taken it out of the plastic, and it's just even the logo with the kind of the cur- well, it's not cursive. I don't know. I would just call it calligraphy, and, and like everything is brown, but then like the album title is in purple. It, whoever did the whoever was the creative director for this book, like the booklet, the back cover, I mean, is iconic to me too, where it's like the, the total contrast where you have the sepia, you know, kind of monochrome, yes. you have the brown, shades of brown. And then you turn it around and it's just like this huge blue sky. And they're in all the, like you have Maxine and the green silk, Terry and the pink silk, Don and the yellow silk. Cindy, and did and Maxine the, have an afro? Silk. Was yes, she, she was did. she giving a fade? Like my girl is saying, I am going to show you these ethnic styles. Yeah, it was it was one it was one performance uh, where they performed my loving, um, and she had like her natural hair. It was like it was like a curly like kind of crinkled fro, but but the but the edges were like slick back. It gave me real Grace Jones vibes. Like I was like, this is very. It, but I was like, I was like, you, uh, you better work. So she said, I'm not doing a wig. I'm gonna do. I'm, I'm giving you my natural hair. And I had a friend who, uh, my friend Nastasia Verdeo from middle school. But like, I remember because I was just such a big and vogue fan. So at some point, I'm sure I brought Funky Divas to uh to middle school, even though the, like middle school was years later. Uh, but I just love them so much. I was still walking around with the with the CD. The first time I had it, it was a cassette, but eventually I got a CD. And like she would always talk about how her dad loved uh, a <laughs> magazine in that booklet in the in the green silk dress because of the boobies of the side boob that she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I mean and then like if you, like I, I, I can't open it because like I said it's from the plastic but then there was that other kind of uh, part of the booklet where it was eventually what became the give it give it <clears throat> giving him something he can feel single cover where they're all they're again in different colored dresses and it's kind of like glamour shots maybe like stout um uh, it's like 50s type of movie stars it was just like the booklet they have never had a booklet as good as Funky Divas. I don't know why. 
So like EV3, I was thinking like it was, you know, this high fashion moment, but there's kind of one look and there might be like um, alternate pictures, but it's still just one look. Here they gave you three and it's actually four, like the, the, the CD. I knew that was Cindy's neck. I had never saw the full picture of the crucifix because she's wearing the crucifix. But I just knew that was her neck. And then like years later, all these decades later, it finally surfaces like that other picture um, from the, I guess, from the photo shoot that didn't make the album uh, as a group anyway. You see them in like these kind of more funkier outfits that are kind of more modern. And then Cindy has on the crucifix. And I was just like, I knew that was Cindy's neck that was on the CD picture. So the whole book is iconic to me. And I really wish like, like, and I know it's like budget, 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 because this had to have been like, you know, they're on a set. I think it's Universal Studios. They have these great photographers, the, you know, hair, the makeup. I'm, I'm sure it's expensive, but I just wish at least it was EV3 or even Masterpiece Theater when they had the, the, the label backing that they could have had like a book where there was at least more than one look in the CD because Born to Sing even gave you two looks. So when did you purchase the album? Was it, did you get it when it was first released or years later? Like, what was your story? Because I've shared this before, but when I asked for In Vogue for Christmas, I got remixed to sing. <laughs> and, and it's so crazy because I, I, um, I don't know if it's, if it's in a, a letter later on or not, but I've seen a couple of people say they had the same story about, no, I think this was on In Vogue Craze on, on Facebook. But um, I've seen someone else say they had that same story about they wanted Funky Divas and Funky Divas was sold out and Mama got the remix to sing. <laughs> so, <laughs> when did you guys get the Funky Divas album? Because I have a very interesting story about how I got, finally got mine. I'm going to say I got it for my birthday. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say it was March 1992. So I think I probably had just turned seven. And I'm thinking that's when I got it or... Maybe I already had it. my memory of the Funky Divas record is I don't know if you remember Home Alone, New York, but there was this specific type of tape recorder and tape player the that Macaulay Culkin had, something. something like that, right? So my mom, she's so sweet and wonderful. I love my mom. She got me that talk boy, and that's how I would listen to the cassette because I had a cassette back in my day, back in 1992, but I don't remember if she bought. Um, the cassette ahead of time because I do remember like I have a memory of being in the Hawthorne Mall shout out to old school LA if you remember the Hawthorne Mall when they had a movie theater before they turned it into the welfare office uh, they had a movie theater and we were going to see Malcolm X which I know came out in 1992 and we were listening to Funky Divas because I remember listening to like This Is Your Life and really being like analytical, like what like a four letter word. I enjoyed the like what is she talking about? And so I just remember like having that memory. Um so I know I had it in nineteen ninety two. I wasn't one of those people um well when I was a kid, of course, like I'm gonna buy this the first day it comes out, but I know I had it in nineteen ninety two as a cassette and then, you know, as cassettes do, something happened and then I remember I was older, like maybe in middle school or something, and I bought a used version of it for like two ninety nine, like a UCD when they used to, you know, at a warehouse um, music store when they would sell UCDs, which I, maybe they still do, but I don't know. Like you have to go on Amazon or something. And then I bought a CD again later because I was like, I don't want to have a used one. I want a new one. And then when the vinyl came out, I bought the vinyl um, and that was, I was probably in my 20s or maybe even my 30s. I, I forget when they, you know, Issue reissued it as a vinyl. Well, I um uh, my dad actually owned the cassette Funky Divas. I had no clue who Invoke was until I saw their videos frequently on VH1 soul videos. And so I went into my dad had like a little briefcase um, of all the cassettes that he owned, <laughs> and he <laughs> had the briefcase, deep. the briefcase yes. baby, with the with the latches that you. I'm like, I'm yes. like, he was he was and he you was zipping like, up, baby. You can take it wherever <laughs> you go. Yes, <laughs> and so he had the Funky Divas uh, album on cassette, and I listened to it myself, and. Then I became a fan, of course. But yeah, I never, I didn't buy it myself. I, but I, but I was exposed, and thankfully, my dad is so eclectic, and he got the album. Oh well, but but my dad and my mom grew up with Cindy and uh, 
So in in twenty twenty twenty, so like he he was kind kind of like supporting at the same time because he kind of knew uh, of them a little bit. So I don't know. Oh, if he's my, from the my, Bay Area. Yeah, I don't know if my my mom and dad knew Tommy and Diddy. That that's a good question. I should ask. But anyways, but he had the cassette. And that's how I kind of kind of got it. So. All right, so don't gag. So I, I got the, I eventually got the tape later on, and like I had the cassette tape at some point. I don't, I think my mom got it for me eventually through like BMG Music Club or whatever. Um, for for all of the youngsters listening, I don't know how many people are super young, but you know, you could you could buy you know ten CDs for a penny or something stupid. <laughs> so my mom, you know, so my mom finally got it to me, but she got, it was years later, but I also want to comment though, like back in the day, like, I mean, if a, if a CD came out, if an album came out in 92, I mean, if you got it in 94, it was still, you know, the business. Was, yeah. Like it was, it was very much that because literally I rem- remember in 94, I had written them and I got an autographed picture and I took it to school at the time. Like I remember where I was, but so fast forward, how I got the CD was I actually got the CD in high school years after it came out and you know, the group had broken up all that stuff. I got it from my girlfriend's father. (laughs) So I was, I had a girlfriend at the time and somehow her father had the In Vogue CD and I was like, oh, can I borrow it? Never gave it back. <laughs> oh, you're one of those. You're one of those. So the fact that I had a girlfriend and I got her daddy's In Vogue CD, it's just, it tickles me to this day. And never gave it back. It never gave it back. So, okay, so how does Funky Divas compare to the other R&B albums released around the same time? Like, um, SWV releases About Time, Mary J. Blige, What's the 411, Ooh on the TLC Tip, Bobby Brown's album that had Ain't Nobody Humping Around, Jade to the Max, Madonna Erotica, The Next oh Year. God, Erotica. <laughs> Janet had the, the groundbreaking Janet album. So how does In Vogue stack up? to kind of some of those huge albums um, at that time. Take it, champ. With all the R&B that was listed and even the others that was not, I feel like I feel like In Vogue just gives you something different. Like, for example, right. with it's SWV, I mean, at the time, and maybe even now, Coco was the only, only singer. You know, so it's, but so you had in Vogue giving you four lead vocalists singing all this different type of stuff, you know, and even like, like Mary J. Blige, like Mary J. Blige, I feel like her discography is iconic, but her voice isn't always. So I feel like I wouldn't compare, I wouldn't compare, (laughs) I wouldn't compare the two, like even TLC, like TLC, they're not, they are, they're like a hip hop R and B. You know what I mean? I feel like Mary J. Blige and DLC kind of give the same type of type of R and B with an with an edge. It has like hip hop feel. So does Jay. So does Bobby Brown. You know. So I just feel like In Vogue are kind of in their own lane, and it just stands on its own. Like you can't. You, it the Funky Divas album has a song that can go against any of these artists' top singles. I love what she said. The lane, their own lane. And I wish, I wish they really understood that there was this specific energy, this particular energy, this ethos that they have with that, naming themselves the Funky Divas. There's this energy that they brought that no one else could bring. And that's what makes you a great act. Yeah. It's not having, oh, well, some, some of them could have sang this. Oh, you know, well, some of them was about to get this song, but I took the song. And then, you know, it was very specific to them almost. And if it wasn't, they sure made it seem that way. Like a free your mind and my love you, you're never going to get it. Just the attitude, the sass, the boldness. And when you hear people exactly. talk about them, like they really don't talk about other female artists like that. And it's not like, you know, other female artists aren't great or other male artists aren't great, but it was just this particular energy that they had that they hold yeah. into. And it's so. Just, just and Jonathan, you use the you use the word elevated, where mm-hmm. how the song compares, how the album compares to Born to Sing before it, 
you use elevated. And I feel like that's a great word because even like if you can, like I'm, I'm thinking of all of these artists, the videos that they had with this, with their, with their singles or whatever. And I'm just kind of like, I mean, Mary J. Blige, she look cute, you know, or SWV, they look, they look cool. TLC, they look, they look kind of fun, you know, uh, but I'm like, but TLC looked like star. I mean, TLC, in Vogue looked like stars, you know, in every single video. It just, it was just very elevated because I feel like they just had a point to prove, like, it was kind of like, we're here and we, and we are who we are. So it, it's, it's just, it's just an elevated presentation. It's not, it's not just the music, not just the voices. It's the entire presentation of it all is just on a different level than these artists at that time, for sure. And I remember, and to be and fair, I, and I was, you said what? I mean, just to be fair, like, it was their sophomore record and like SBV, TLC, Mary J, like, they're, first coming out so they're not going to have the budgets and everything so exactly um but it's still more even with like even like taking away the fashion and the videos it's just like that particular just the funkiness and the sass and like how people i think the phrase they used was high octane but they were like, almost like these superheroes like they were just so awesome in that yes. moment and i wish like yes. that's the kind of energy they need to bring to the stuff that you know henceforth and they'll be fine because no one else can do that um i remember i remember we had i remember we had a listener letter and they were asking us um like who who are what are some songs by other artists that we could that we could hear in Vogue doing, and since this like the these all these artists are list, I honestly would have loved to hear in Vogue sing everything by Mary J. Blige. I think that would have been a good look for them, especially like kind of like in their Runaway Love era. That would have went well with that song. Everything by Mary J. Blige. I was listening to that last night, and I and I also would have loved to hear Dawn do one thing by A. Marie. So, when it comes to those 90s albums that we listed, I mean, I think they are very different. Um, there is, for me, like, being like in Vogue and Janet Jackson have always been my, like, top two artists. To me, I can kind of compare Funky Divas to the Janet album because both, both are very versatile. They give you the rock, the R&B, the pop, and all of that. So, that's kind of, that's the only other album that I can really think of. And Janet came, that album came out in May of 93. So, it's almost, um, when did uh, Funky Divas come out? March 92. Okay, so more than a year later. But I think the reason why I love Janet and In Vogue is just the versatility, versatility of both artists. Like, you're going to get... This the R and B. You're gonna get the pop. You're gonna get like the the edge, the rock, the dance. Um, so I think there are a lot of similarities there. I've always kind of connected the two um, in terms of what I like to hear from an artist. You know what I'm saying? That's just kind of well rounded and kind of delivers. Sophisticated. Right. Right. As far as songs that I want to hear in Vogue, I can't think of it. I can't. I can't hear in Vogue singing everything by Mary J. Blige. Like I just that doesn't register. <laughs> Like Mary J. Blige is <laughs> well, such Mary was trying to harmonize on that Mary record, is so such a up. very specific type of singer who I love. I just can't really hear in the Vogue there, but you know. I know. But listen to the but, backgrounds. The next time you listen to it, listen to the backgrounds because I feel like on Share My World, like I don't know how I ended up on like I was just like listening, like YouTube was just taking me everywhere. But it was like Share My World, um, I Can Love You, and everything. And I was like, oh, she's really trying to give vocal arrangements. And I feel like that's another thing that people, and of course, like there have been vocal arrangements since you know since there's recorded music. But I think there's a very specific way that In Vogue did their backing arrangements, and then people kind of took from that as well and. So you can kind of hear it as opposed to like um, what's the 411 to how she progressed to share my world where like you hear all these different parts. I'm like, okay, see, look at Mary trying to harmonize with herself. Like Born to Sing, Funky Divas featured an, an acapella section on certain songs. Another acapella intro was on the song Yesterday. Thoughts? Did they add these two acapella pieces to show off their harmonizing skills? Do you have a favorite acapella track on Funky Divas or sections on certain songs? Like, what do you guys think of all of the acapella moments on the Funky Divas track? I think they were always trying to prove that they could sing. 
you know, I think that was a, a because so many groups are like, oh, it's, it's, it's digital, it's electronic. You know, I think they always wanted to prove that, no, 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 we can really do this for real. So I think they always tried to find those moments to highlight, you know, those harmonies. The, uh, the, the acapella part of yesterday, it didn't really impress me that much. Not that it sounds bad, um, but I didn't think it was like, Amazing, just because I mean I know the girls can sing, I know they can harmonize. I've I've been hearing it, so I would have liked for them to t- take like a different direction with the with the acapella moments, the same way they did with uh, the my loving moment. Um, you know, because I feel like the the people I don't care. I don't care what audience you are performing to. The people love a harmony moment. Like when you're like singing something and then you just kind of break off in a harmony and it just sounds great. The people love it. I, I you know, I, in a black church, we do, we do the, the fan like, yes, y'all better say. Like, like, I feel like those moments uh, are always dope. So I loved yesterday. Yes, that was I the track. <laughs> I don't even, I can't like, cause you know, like I'm what, six seven years old like I don't really understand I, you know I didn't understand like the kind of the meaning of that like you know when you're an adult kind of looking back on your life and kind of believing in the past more so because you're thinking okay I'm gonna tomorrow 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 like that's what a young kid is thinking but there was always this kind of melancholy to it but then like the tempo was kind of a little bit more upbeat than you know the original and I know thousands of people have covered that song but that was my introduction. Like, I, I didn't really listen to the Beatles at all growing up. So, I lyrically, I didn't know what they were talking about, but just there was, like I said, a melancholy. There's a little bit of sadness to it. And Cindy did just such a great job with the lead. I'm trying to think of it. It was not completely a cappella, but it begins. Now, that beat drops on uh, that oh, so right. suddenly. <laughs> when she say, I'm not half the girl I used to be, and that beat drops. But that's Cindy for yesterday. I think like when I think of her vocal moments, her great vocal moments, I would have to say that's one of them. That was her lead on the record. I, I believe everyone got one except Terry. Terry had two, just pure solos. And she did her thing for me. That's one of my favorites. And it was one of the songs that wasn't a single, but that got airplay, got a lot of airplay. And they did, they performed it on some certain televised shows and, I remember there's this one, it's not on the craze, and I haven't seen anybody post it online, but back in the day, if you were on the craze of the street team, there was this person who sold like these VHS tapes of all of these in vogue performances. And I'm sure we'll get into the performances later, but there's just this one clip of her singing it, well, the group singing it. It's some show like commemorating like the year of the black woman and they introduce it saying that like, you know, all the yesterdays that black women had to deal with and then they go into yesterday. I just, I, I would say that I, I love that. But then, of course, my loving is just brilliant how they put acapella in the middle of a song because, you know, acapella at the beginning of beat drop, you can't do that again. You know, I mean, you could do it again, but it's not going to hit the same way the second time. So to have it in the middle, now it's time for, now it's time for a breakdown. And then acapella like that. One of your favorite songs, one of the standout lyrics, um, for me, I have to say, Give It Up, Turn It Loose is just that ultimate, like, breakup anthem. It is just, it gives me, you know, motivation and it, it's inspirational when I'm going through. I just think <laughs> I listen to Maxine and I feel better about that thing. Um, I mean, really, like, um, what else do I love? I mean, I, I really enjoy all the songs from this on this album. And what I love the most though is that even though this album came out in 1992, I'm still kind of rediscovering this album today. Like over the last like couple of years, I've been really into like hip hop lover and like just different songs that I may not have listened to as often when it initially came out um, that I have a, a level of enjoyment for today. Hey, uh, for me, I like it. That's an, I, I love the record. So you could go all start from This Is Your Life, even the interludes, the little skits and stuff like that. I, I pretty much love every moment of the record. Of course, there's some songs I love more. And just depending on my mood, there might be sometimes I'm going to turn one up more times and I'm going to keep replaying it. But 
my loving, this is your life to my loving, to hip hop lover, to free your mind, to give it up in the loose, to desire, to get it over to the fat lady things, to give it up in the loose, to yesterday, to, to like it's just a really good record. So, um, standout lyrics though, well, I mean, I can't go after JP in the rapping, but I do like how, like, Invoke had a song where they're like, this is who we are, you know, time to talk. About mm-hmm. the info pertaining to the four who we opened up the harmony door and let the <laughs> vocals. So, like, you better talk that yes. mess. Standout lyrics will obviously be free of mind because it's the most socially conscious song. And I feel like it's it's them owning their blackness, you know, at a time in the 90s where, you know, you know. <laughs> Um, so I, I, I love, I love those lyrics. Um, my favorite songs on the album, I feel like it varies seasonally because they have a song for every mood. You know, um, Free Your Mind is like a, is special because I, obviously I always think of the video and that dance breakdown is like so iconic to me. Um, and also because the ladies are like, they're just belting. You know what I mean? Uh, like, of course, like, you know, some other songs, like, they kind of start, like, really sexy and sultry, you know, and, like, their their regular register. But, like, to have a song where they are, like, belting and screaming and, you know, it's it's very, like, uh, powerful. How is I cold at? So I love that that um, and I actually think that this is your life is a great opening for the album because I love mm-hmm. that harmony. This is your life. I love that chorus. I love that chorus. Mama was saying. Uh, <laughs> I love that chorus, and of course, like you know, songs like "Hooked on Your Love" and "Give Him Something He Can Feel." Like they just have a special place, like. You know, if 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 I have a boo, you know, or if I'm feeling sexy, I can like put on a, a scented candle with my with my red wine, you know, or if I or if I or if I'm feeling the gayness of it all, I put on what is love, and I just you know I dance around. They they have a song for every type of mood, um, but I would say that "Free Your Mind" is my favorite song on that album. So, is there a favorite music video? My loving, it was the one I remember like, oh my God, I was obsessed with that video. I remember it was like number one on the BET top 20 countdown for like weeks. And I had to watch it like every time it would come on. And it was like, you know, I, I, I can say I was up bad when I was a little kid. So if I was on punishment, my punishment would be, okay, you can't watch the VET. And it would just kill me. Like I'd be trying to like sneak out, like poke my head out of my room so I could see the video. If someone was watching it, like I just love that video. Matthew Rolston did a, an impeccable job with that video. It is just, cause it gives you so many things. It kind of gives you modern. It gives you film noir. It gives you, you know, um, Busby Berkeley musical or MGM musical. It mm-hmm. gives you color. It gives you black and white. It gives you fashion. Mm-hmm. It gives you hair. All these looks. Um, the choreography, even though you can't really see it all, like it, it was just a masterful video. The cinematography, and I know they do list and list change, but at one point, MTV ranked it as one of the 100 best videos of all time. The cinematography is great. It's just, you know, when you have like a fashion photographer, an actual photographer who knows the lighting and how to make the woman beautiful, every angle, every shot, they're beautiful. You know, it, it I mean, it, it's just the beauty and the legs and the walk and the silver dresses and the disco ball. And then the um, the ballet pole, everything about that video. That's uh, one of my all time favorite Invoke videos, and definitely favorite from Funky Divas. Free your mind, my, my favorite video too. I just just the 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 styling of it was so unorthodox. There, the hair, you know, the the outfits. 
even like the the portions where I think it was Terry and Dawn where they had that like metal contraption they were sitting in the audience like just that all that whoever whoever styled it you know all the shots i'm just kind of like it 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 was it's just i literally watch it like randomly because i want to so that's definitely my favorite song on the album and my favorite music video as well shout out to mark romantic mark romantic he did you don't have to worry and you can see talk about progression from you don't have to worry to a freer mind like he came correct and i think that got him his first grammy award nomination for best music video which he would win later with i think michael and jennifer scream and then janet again with god till it's gone but i think that was his first grammy award for best music video he did scream Mm-hmm, Mark yes. And no. he did scream because Janet, I think, wanted to work with him because she liked the Free Your Mind video. And Madonna wanted to work with him for the Rain video because she liked the Free Your Mind video. And Nine Inch Nails wanted to work with him because I think he saw the Rain video that Madonna wanted to do with him because he did the movie. So, like, that's what I'm talking about. Like, it's just, we talk about Elevated. Like, they were just on to something with that because they could have just been in a mosh pit or something and, you know, just, you know, with Mohawks or something, just, you know, but they, and of course you have to give it to the director, but to have that kind of foresight to have a director like that and look at the treatment and be like, okay, this is a total departure from us, but we're going to stand in it. We're going to be bold. We're going to be fearless. It's a great video. Yes. I don't have a favorite video from Funky Divas. I mean, I love them all. They're all just very special and very different. I, yeah, I don't really have a favorite at all. But what is your least favorite track on the album? I told you mine. Uh, dun, 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 dun. It's really yesterday least favorite. Yeah, yeah. What is wrong you're with Cindy? you? Oh, that is cool. It's not. It's, <laughs> it's, not it's, like it's a bad song. It's just like it when I when I turn on Funky Divas, it's not my go to track. Where I'm like, I'm gonna listen to it. yesterday. I'm gonna listen to it. it. Ain't over. Like no, I go to other songs. But I but if there's a moment, like even today, getting prepared for the episode, I listen to the whole album all the way through. Um, and I and those songs did not did not get skipped. Cause they, cause, cause they're good songs. They're just not my most favorite. <laughs> but let me ask you, because you're a Cindy fan, she, you love her voice. What do you feel is a song that really shows what she can do? And I'm talking about a solo because, like, to me, like her best vocal performance is "Don't Let Go." That run she did, but that's not a whole song. Like, is there one song where you're like, that is just? Or does she have a song like that that just really showcased her to her best ability? Um, I will say, I think whatever showcases mm. her voice because she has all those high notes, um, that she, that she just hits effortlessly. Um, that's a good question too. Yeah, maybe we can save it for another episode. Yeah, let's save, just- let's save it. But I, I do think, uh, whatever is one of, is one of those songs for sure. Well, my least favorite, my least favorite, I think, would have to be, I'm going to say Hooked on Your Love, and not because I don't like it, but it's like you have, the recovery to me is a little bit too much. And so Give It Up, Turn It Loose is in the, no, I keep saying Give It Up, Turn It Loose when I'm into like giving him something he can feel. Like they're in the same vein, I feel like giving him something he can feel is a little bit superior. So I would like maybe some contemporary R&B, and I know um, I still like it. I don't like it as much as giving him something he can feel. And so I think that is the one that maybe they could have substituted out. Like, I even like um, Thanks Prayer a little bit more. In, that's just like an outro. So, I mean, for me, it's, it ain't over to the fat lady sings. I mean, you know, like when I was young, I used to, I used to, I had the, the, um, the cassette, um, the lyrics and stuff and I would memorize them and I used to be able to do that rap from start to finish but all in all I could have done without it it was it's just very random you know I mean it's nice to hear Maxine doing her little growl on the little hook and all that (laughs) (laughs) did you know 
The version of Funky Divas released today features remixed versions of Hip Hop Lover, It Ain't Over Till the Fat Lady Sings, and Love Don't Love You, not the original versions, which, in our fearless leader Matt's opinion, are better. You know what's so crazy? For so long, I thought I was going nuts because when I would listen to Love Don't Love You, I'm like, that don't sound like what I remember. You know, like when I listen to it on streaming now, it doesn't sound like what I remember from the CD. So I had to go back and listen to it to see the difference. And yes, Love Don't Love You, the original version is much better than whatever they have on streaming now. Because I remember the like this version on streaming has this little intro that da, da, and I'm like, what is this? Like, I thought I was going crazy. I thought maybe I just envisioned or imagined a different version. <laughs> right. But apparently, okay, so there is a different version. I don't hear any differences in Hip Hop Lover, though, or... Well, I don't really listen to It Ain't Over to the Fat Lady Sings, but um, Love Don't Love You is the one song that I do hear a big difference, and the original version is far superior. I always wonder why, after something is released, like, what's the purpose of, like putting out a different version uh, if it if it's just to appease like the producer who's like oh I like this and I'm like but we already we already it's already out <laughs> it's already out I feel and I feel like anybody who puts anything out whether it's a photograph a movie a, a, a TV show anything I feel like you're always picking apart how it could have been better what you could have done differently because obviously you're growing from the artist you were when you made that project. So, you know, but I'm like, just leave it the same. <laughs> I just assumed it was like a remix or something. Like maybe like right. a, a, um, a, you know, a radio version or something like that is what I was thinking. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened with that. But I like when I listen to it on YouTube, there's that version with the dent that you talked about. And I like, like, okay, well, it's not this one. And then I look for, cause you, I, I can never remember which one that want, I want to hear, but I like the one where it, um, there's not that dun, dun. so when I hear that it's like okay no this isn't the love don't love you and then the other one's like you said I'm not really familiar like I, I haven't listened to Hip Hop Lover in a long time I need to just put in the CG go for a drive and listen to Hip Hop Lover Hip Hop Lover let me say like the, <laughs> there is a remix on the the um the Runaway Love that is a bop I feel like that could have been a smash and it was mixed I think produced by um Quincy Jones on Q- Q Quincy D the third. So final thoughts. Is Funky Divas an iconic album that yes. stands up there with the greatest R&B albums of all time? Yes. Where does it land on your list of favorite In Vogue albums? Number, Number one. one. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Number one. It is iconic, it's, and that's that. It's unanimous. It's, that's it's, that. It is the best In Vogue album that has ever been released. And yes, it stands up there. Um, Rolling Stone got it right. They are, it is in the top 100. I think it's actually in the top 40 best R&B albums in the 90s, honestly. I would, I would, I would put it, I would put it a little bit further up than 60. But I guess I would have to, have to go back and refresh my memory. Like, what are all the albums that were out in the 90s? Cause that's a whole decade of R&B. <laughs> But I just feel like In Vogue, In Vogue is definitely up there. You know, I don't know these other people. Their uh, their songs they making placements in February 2022 for the Super Bowl. <laughs> so it definitely is more more higher than sixty. Shoot, hey now. Well, yeah, well, that's all albums, though. It wasn't just R&B. It was uh, all. So it could have been, like, up against Green Day and Limp Biscuit if they were out and Britney and all those people. It was the whole 90s, and it wasn't... It was, like, 90s period. It wasn't R&B. But, um, like we said, it's I, it's one of the best. And what my final thought with that is, like, think about that energy that you brought the next time you go into a studio. And I'm talking to the ladies of Invoke. Think of, just think about the energy, not... The genre, none of that. Just think about the way you sang. Think about how people received it. Because that's the type of attitude and sass and boldness and ferocity. Like, that's what made people love you. And so, if you were having songs that don't have that those elements, you know... It's just, it's not going to, it's its not your best self. It's not you in your highest realm. It's not the best reflection of Invoke. So really, I wish they would listen to the record 
And you know, the, you call you call yourself the Funky Divas, and you are, but just understand what that means. What are your favorite Invo commercials, promo spots, TV theme songs during the Funky Divas era? And just to refresh your memory, there was a Converse commercial. There was SNL promo with Mary Stuart Masterson. There were was the Fox commercial breaks when Invo was hosting that Fox night when uh, they were on, in Love and Color and Rock. And they also did the Hanging with Mr. Cooper theme song in the Rock theme songs. What are your favorites? What stands out to you? Mine is hanging with Mr. Cooper. Yo, Coop, you're on. <laughs> What is my favorite? Uh, there is an interview, and like I said, this is another one that you're not going to see on the craze or any other internet. It's no one that's put it up yet, but I remember it was, I don't know if it was Video So because they had done Video So with Donnie that week, and that one is on YouTube, but this was the interview they did with Sherry Carter, and they had on like pink and green, um, variations of pink and green like these little um, short dresses and the reason why I love it the interview was so funny because you got to see their personalities and like Terry was putting her hands on Don and I was like Terry your hands are so cold and then uh, Maxine was talking about an interview they did and somebody called her a troll and she was like and someone called me a troll and I don't know who called me a troll and Terry was like um, just laughing because the way it was set up it was like two um, on one couch and there was another couch and behind that was raised and so it was just like a very just a very funny interview and I think probably just um I didn't see it when it aired I don't I didn't see it when it aired but like I said when I bought that VHS with all the interviews and stuff from that period that was on there and I loved the way they looked and it's just like a funny interview like they're so relaxed and Sherry Carter I love Sherry Carter um so you know she's a good interviewer so that's probably my favorite promo um interview and the eleven color, uh, the eleven color skit they did with oh, yeah, there's so many. It's it's still hilarious to this day. <laughs> like it's st- it's still hilarious to this day. They did a good job on that. There was so much joy as a kid, like seeing Invoke pop up in the most random of places. Like they had like a whole storyline on Rock, and I just recently yes, yes. because it's it's on BET Plus, and I recently just watched like they were on several episodes and like seeing them do Wanda. Like, I think that was probably like the most iconic television appearance because Wanda wanted to be in the group and she had her own dress and she was like, <laughs> y'all kick me out and ro- 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 like, <laughs> like like evoke like it's crazy a different world when they played Mrs. Uh, Mr. Gaines' nieces and they did yes. free your mind. Uh-huh. I was a little mad at that because I was like, okay, they needed to still be fierce at the end. Like, they can start off nerdy, but by the end, I need yeah. them to be, like, serving But they were me. still in character. Right? Yeah, they were still very much in character, but I guess it was a comedic choice. But I don't know. In Vogue, like, they really worked hard during this Funky Divas era. It was a time of, like, when you, when you release an album, you really push it, and you figure out every opportunity to... Um, to maximize it and they did just that because they had so many great moments I mean who's doing theme songs for two different shows right we have to have our uh, uh, episode just for TV appearances and TV spots alone because like he talked about Rock I mean magazine stay away from my little brother like they were really <laughs> acting on that episode I right? did like I mean they were they were not just like over oh, going to scene like it was about drugs and violence and like you know like uh, they were dealing with a drug dealer who got murdered at the, like, I think by the end the drug dealer had got killed and so it was like oh he's dead now so your little brother to save it was just a lot <laughs> it was so much like ugh. I just I do have some questions I want to know who put that together I want to know like did you try for other opportunities because I mean because I think some of the girls are really decent actors you know we, we need to have a separate episode because I, I want to talk about that because I, I can answer your question but let's save it for the next episode um, and then we'll talk off camera <laughs> but right. um 
Uh, so we're going to get into the letters. And Josh, I miss you so much because I love when you say, now let's get into the letters. <laughs> but here we go. Submitted letters. Questions, comments, anecdotes, email them to us at partofusebf at gmail.com or send us a DM on Instagram and we'll read it in an uh, in an upcoming episode. And our first email is from Timothy from Tucson, Arizona. Timothy is asking us if you could have one former member, Maxine, Amanda, or Don return to Invogue permanently, who would it be? Oh, and he has another, he has two questions. The second question is if you could have one already established singer, example, Tony Braxton, Vanessa Williams, join Invoke as a fourth member, who would it be? Can't you just see Tony Braxton being an Invoke? <laughs> 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 that is a mess. Um, for me, I think it would be Maxine as the former member to come back. And if I could have one already established singer, I think we talked about this last week, but I was really feeling Shantae more. Um, but also, since we talked about, you know, from our What's Trending section, I mean, Die Reed from Jade, I think that would be really cute. Oh, yes. I mean, she that, that would be amazing. <laughs> And she still looks good. She looks, looks good. Well, the shape is everything. Mama is snatched in, in all the right places. Like, the voice, the vocals are there. I would be so happy to have her in my group. I'm really trying to understand what they have going on because that miracle person from The Voice, like, I, I've never heard her sing. I don't watch The Voice, but it's like, what is the beef? I'm sorry. <laughs> Champ. <laughs> um, I I would obviously want Maxine to return. I I do think that the era that the four, that Maxine, Terry, and Cindy had with Rona as a foursome when they were touring or whatever. That was a great era. So I would definitely have Maxine um, perf- Maxine return. I wouldn't even I don't even, I wouldn't even consider Amanda just because she was her her membership was so small. Um, and I, although she's beautiful and she's super talented. You know, one, she says that a group dynamic isn't something that she fits in. And I just feel like she didn't really make a, she didn't really make a mark for me to campaign for her to come back. But her time made me appreciate what she had to offer at the time. But yeah, it would definitely be. I mean, listen, the Gift of Christmas album cover was just so fabulous to me. I would have her back for that alone. (laughs) <laughs> it was like the last time they had well no no I don't want to say the last time but for like for a decade or more it was like the last time they had a budget and they had like a hair person and a makeup person okay and, like <laughs> cause they was cute on that cover they were let me wait let me let me look at this album when they were where, they're in the snow glow yes I hate the album cover Amanda was giving that okay she was giving though she was giving I will say that she was giving um and an established singer that I would bring back. I think Shantae Moore is definitely a great, um, a great uh, choice. I can't think of any other other singers. Maybe, maybe Tamia or Deborah Ooh. Cox. Ooh. Like, I, honestly, I feel I feel like vocally Deborah Cox would fit in the best. I think Deborah Cox would fit in the best vocally. Better. But Tamia is like t- cause Tamia. Have you heard her? Have you heard her like her recent music? Sis is just amazing. She's never stopped being amazing. But now let me ask you too, because you both said Shantae Moore. Now you know her and Terry are friends, and I didn't realize until I saw her unsung like they must be very good friends. So you know, people not me, but other people have this like kind of uh, this notion that Terry uh, kind of runs the show, and a lot of things that happen are her doing Mm -hmm. so knowing their relationship as being basically I think even Don said when she was on RBD that she had to have a talk with her not negative but just like I know you guys are friends with Terry well I know you're friends with Terry and I just hope that doesn't affect us on the show so apparently they're close now Mm -hmm. that doesn't like you you'll be fine with that like her having like one of her besties in the group well I mean at this point is she running the show either way (laughs) I mean (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, I do. I do feel like perhaps Shantae Moore being in the group and if Terry won't show that would take a toll on their friendship. I can see somebody assuming that because you're my friend, 
you're going to side with me. But Shantae Moore, as we've seen in the Army Divas, she's her own person. She has her own mind. Mm-hmm. She don't care how close she don't care how close y'all are. But she's like, if 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 this is how I feel, this is how I feel. Um, but for the record, so, Shantae Moore would never do that. <laughs> she never would. No, she, she would. She would. Never she would, do she would like, not. I mean, she. she would not. Uh, Cause she's very much, she's very much, uh, you know, the star in her own mind. So she, she, she would never agree to do that to like be a member of In Vogue. Now maybe like a a a group like forming their own separate group, like maybe her and Terry and you know a couple of other chicks, you know, doing their own doing their own thing in that way, but. Well, we've never really gotten into how her and Terry sang back up for well, Beyonce Rex and for Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, so you know, I had, I did not even know that. When was this? Is there footage? Like, yeah, I, I need to she, see she this. Sang fever, right? Was it Fever? Yes, yeah. Fever on Jay Leno. Yeah, it was when um, Beyonce was doing. Um, so this must have been two thousand and three. She was doing the Fighting Temptations, and she was from. This was before her, before Crazy in Love came out. This was early, mm-hmm. um, two thousand and three, uh, when Fighting Temptations came out first, I believe. And Shantae Moore, Shantae Terry Moore, Ellis. and Terry Ellis. It was the Tonight Show, if I'm not mistaken. And they were singing background for yes, her. Yes, they were yes. singing background. That- is so random but so epic. I could only imagine how rehearsals were. I need to know. <laughs> I need to know these things. Oh my god! And yeah, they sang back up for Tony too. Well, I was just gonna say the former member that I will pick is yes. I'll go with the with the crowd today. Would be Magazine because, um, like, I agree with all your reasons for not choosing Amanda, and then with Don. <laughs> I mean, we already know what will happen. The 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 keyword is permanently. She will be there maybe about, you know, Six a couple months, months and then there will be some drama. <laughs> and then we get about a thousand more Instagram lives. Um, but then the established singer, see, I would do what no one is expecting anyone would do. And I would put a man in the group, preferably one who plays an instrument. Preferably a man? One who's in, yes. I would okay. Play, and he doesn't have to be a singer. Maybe he could just be a guitarist. Like, what says established singer? Like, I would love to see them, like, work with Slash. Like, that would change the whole vibe. I don't know if he sings, though. Maybe Martin Gore from Depeche Mode, because he is a singer, but he's, like, the main songwriter and the main, he, like, produces. So, he doesn't even really have to be in the videos or up front or anything like that. He could just be, like, in a video somewhere, strum the guitar, and they could still do the choreography if they want to have choreography. But you, it would just kind of change it, and I think it would bring more interest and then having someone who's musically inclined I think someone who plays an instrument would help them so I would any Martin Gore plays obviously the keyboards and he plays guitar so I would kind of switch it up a little bit I wouldn't want another woman in the group I would pick like a male musician and then like you know Cindy well I don't think she's gonna have any more children but just like in the past like if you had that like then you could kind of break off in side projects and stuff you know, and you know, like how, like bands a lot of times they will kind of, um, have these side projects. So you got like Temple of the Dog where you have people from, um, Pearl Jam and Soundgarden or you have Velvet Revolver where you have people from Guns N' Roses and Stone Temple Pilots. So that's my thinking. Like, you know, just, you know, make it interesting. Uh, we have another letter. It comes from Darren. He says, hi, everybody. Thanks for the fan cast. A lot of fun and always a good time listening. I thought the recent auxiliary episode was a neat treat. It was almost like a mini concert and gave us the opportunity to listen to different lineups back to back. Turns out they all stack up pretty well. I was especially impressed with the sad but true rendition. It was also a nice supplement for the recent discussion as well as a little window into all that the craze has to offer. Heading over there to check it check it out now. Thanks, Darren. Um, yes, go check out the Invo Craze YouTube channel. Um, Matthew, our producer, puts a whole bunch of great clips on there. If you are a huge Invoke fan, you're going to enjoy all the all the goodies that it has to offer. And thank, thank you, Darren, Darren, for your letter. We appreciate thank you. Thank you for listening. We have another email from our last email is from Casey. Uh, Casey, Casey says, what's good, y'all? Casey here with a shout out to the craze. Loving the podcast. Hey, hey. I just have a few points on Dawn. Oh. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> okay, here we go. 
<laughs> I get that she left because of money and because she wanted to go solo. I just don't understand why she has never rejoined. It's not like Evie um, have been overly busy, so she could have snuck in for all the performances, collect the money, and add to her name, then ride on that and do her solo stuff whenever Evie was not performing. Especially Cindy and her family, there is more than enough downtime on the side, saying goes for Max. It's not like they're dropping a new album every year, so why not do both? Also got to agree with Josh. Cindy and Terry are much more professional in their communication, keeping all the doors open. So I've been saying this for the longest time. Like, I'm going to make this money. Like, I, I we work with people every day we don't like, okay? Everybody everybody in their cubicle, at their cash register, or wherever you are, like, you deal with people you don't like every day, but you got you go in and get your money. So, to me, I'm going to go hit the road. We're going to sing these songs. If y'all want to go do an album and sign with Rough Town, Motown, Uptown, <laughs> go do it. I'll see y'all on the road. Like, to me, that's common sense. Like, I don't... Exactly. I don't understand that. Um, I don't understand what can be so bad that you can't go sing the songs that you already recorded and didn't get paid nothing for anyway. So you might as well go get your money on the road. Like, why just be like, I'm taking a stand. Like, girl, you're going to take a stand and be poor. So, yeah, I agree, Casey. Um, I don't know what that's about, or what it's giving. I think it's just, um, I don't know if it's ego or if it's just, I think some people move out of what they feel is principle, but principle don't pay the bills. It doesn't. It, it, <laughs> does, it does not. It, you know, I feel like it even just being, being a regular Joe Schmo. You know, there I, I work with people who I don't like who Every get on my day. nerves, but I'm there for my check. Every and, single day. You know, and then but and then obviously I'm there are times where I'm like, I want to quit, but I don't quit until I have something lined up that is going to give me what I'm getting there, or if not more. So it's like you're leaving with the assumption that you'll do well as a solo artist. But you ain't got nothing lined up. You ain't got no you, But you might <laughs> exactly. It's not, it's not, nothing is definitive. So I agree with you, Kay. I agree with you, Casey. I do feel like it's like, sis, you, you, it's not going to kill you to swallow your pride right. and get these checks so you can go on, so you can go on tour. You know what I mean? And, and like I said, I think we all said it before. It's like, and that exposure will hopefully open to other doors and opportunities for you to take advantage of as your own entity, you know, but, but but standing standing on this principle of being the problematic one out of a group is not to me. I don't think is a good look. And I'm like, yeah, come back, girl. What are you? What else are you doing? Because even like even even like the transparent moment, like I have, I'm having an issue with the manager at my job, right? And and you know we kind of go back and forth. But then after time subsides, I'm kind of like, you know what? What I am upset with. Is not even that big of a deal to really, especially not get to my be found emotions all unravel. You know what I mean? It's like it's like it's not it's not it's not that big. And and I, I always I always wonder even like even like even with Danny Kane even with even with Danny Kane's breakup. Like I'm kind of like I, I I wonder like what it is about about the industry where people assume that every single situation is supposed to be like this harmonious uh, situation. Right. It's like, no, it's you're work. dealing with people. You, 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 even like, it's you know, the, the movie, the movie that, uh, what's that freaking movie with Tom Hardy and Charlie Theron? Um, the apocalyptic movie. But like, I know that they, those two didn't get along on set. Like, like people said, like they used to have screaming matches, and like, but the movie was great. <laughs> so it's like we're we're not here to be besties. We're here to create great product. That's all. So it's like, why can't you just swallow your pride and and be like, you know what? I don't hate you, but we're not the best friends. But but we make good magic. The formula we had as a foursome was so finite and good. Look at all of the things that we did as a group. And and what can we do now if we put our differences aside and, and allow that same formula to, to open up new opportunities for us, you know, with, with Rona. Uh, but yeah, I agree with you, Casey. You are 100% McCann, correct. McCann, did you have thoughts? Because I feel like there's something that something ruined. <laughs> 
I mean, I feel like we talk about this one all the time. Uh, <laughs> I think I said what I need to say. I've been eloquent with it. I mean, I agree. Like, I wish, like, if in a perfect world, the breakup would have never happened. We wouldn't have to consider anyone else. But, I mean, unfortunately, it did. Don has rejoined, though. We can't forget that she's joined. She's left. She's had issues with the management. Maxine, I think her issue... I mean, she left, but she wants to start another in Vogue. So, maybe... She just really doesn't like working with Cindy and Terry. But like you've said, like, I'm not going to miss a check because I don't like somebody. Like, I put in as much as you did. I'm not leaving. Exactly. But the way things happen. Um, so I, I really don't know. Like, when I hear about these groups like Jade, I don't know why the other two wouldn't want to work with the third one. Like, to me, a lot of stuff, I just don't get it. I, I, I Like, you read about these groups. Like, I was looking at Rose Royce yesterday, Gwen Dickey. She was like, I didn't like the feeling that I was getting from the members. They were, I guess, getting jealous of her because she was getting all this attention as a lead singer. So she left. But what do you like? To do what? It's just, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, Wait. Okay, so I had this idea, and this is slightly off topic, but I'm going to mention it. I'm going to put it into the universe because I want it to happen. I feel like I would take, like, I would take, like, Maxine and Dawn, and I would take, like, Diary, and I would take, like, um, the chick from Changing Faces. What's her name? Because she could. Cassandra. Cassandra, Lu- Cassandra Lucas. Or um, Athena Cage from Cut Close. And I'm like, y'all gonna hey. be a group, right? And y'all gonna go tour and just sing your old songs. Like, y'all not gonna be, like, trying to be a new group. But you're gonna be, like, you're gonna tour singing... A super the, group. Right. But you're just gonna sing, like, the songs that you're all known for. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, give him something he can feel. And, like... Don't walk away and cut close. What the, what they have? Whatever they have. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would just get some other Twisted. chicks. I would get some other chicks from other groups. Said. And I'd be like, okay, if I can't use the Invogue name, we're going to be, you know, whoever. And we're going to go tour singing all of our songs. So you're not just getting one group. You're getting four groups in one. And this how we're going to make our coin. I mean, look, I, I wouldn't be upset at an... R&B Divas Revival. I don't um, need that. That was a great I mean, show. I, I know that Carlos King has his BET show, but I think that that's a, an entirely different type of process because it's like they're living in a house for a month yeah. and they're trying to create, and they're trying to create like that, new music like realistically women over 50 years old are just not going to be given the opportunity to like be successful in exactly. a mainstream way but they can and, make and money on the road touring like that is the bread and butter but we'll never know why the hate runs so deep or if it is even hate but these groups who know like I, I don't know so like I, we talk about this all the time we could keep talking about it we, we, we will keep talking about it but it's just so strange to me. Yeah. Like, you know how it's like, I, yes. I really can't get my mind right to just get a check. I, I don't get just it. Just get your think... check, clock out, and go home. Like, that is all Amen. it is. Because I do is it every day. I feel, like, I feel like we'll never, ever get the type of transparency we got with Escape when they were hashing out all their issues. Because they were very mm, candid. They were. They were very candid with what was going on. Like, Candy and, and was like, no, 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 no. accountability. Like, you know, the, exactly. the girl, Tamika, she was like, I went and said some stuff that wasn't true. And, you know, right. da, 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 And, you right. know, they all, Latasha, know. Latasha was like, you know, yeah, me and Candy, we don't see out there all the, all the time. It's like, you know, and it's like, and that's okay. You know, so, but I feel like we're not going to get that same level of transparency with these other other because I feel like people don't want to do any self reflection, you know. Mm. But they don't want to make themselves look bad. So no. exactly. But I, I feel like you when you own it, people look at you. It's like you know what I respect that because you're honest and and you're trying to be better. Like I can I can respect somebody who says you know what I was an asshole. <laughs> and, and I recognize that, but I'm trying to approach it a different way. I can respect that. You know, New Edition did that. Hey, they still have problems to this day, but they're kind of, you know what? But they're going on tour, but they, they, you, they want the check. The 10th commandment of the 11th commandment, thou shalt get the check. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> exactly. I would, like, you're going to split this, you're going to split this up one more way, baby. <laughs> we're going to split it one more way. 
<laughs> but Timothy, Darren, Casey, we thank you for your letters. Stop asking us about Don, though, because um, we—I uh, mean, don't stop asking us. We're going to talk about it. But We're gonna Don is the it, most yeah. beloved member of the group. We're always going to discuss her. Thank you. Ah! <laughs> so, uh, so we're wrapping it up, but we want to thank everybody for listening to part of us in Invo- in Invoke Fancast. You can listen to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music Podcasts, and YouTube. Uh, a reminder to our listeners to please email us any Invoke footage you may have, and we'll host it on our YouTube channel, Invoke Rays. For more Invoke related related content. Find us on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at Invo Craze and on Twitter at Part of Us Fancast. If you have any comments or questions, they can be sent to Part of Us EVF at gmail.com. Thanks to our co- to my co-hosts for joining. Um, and Josh, we miss you. We can't wait to be with you again on the next episode. Um, you can find me on social media on Instagram and Twitter at It's Champ Johnson and on TikTok, Champ Johnson and the number two. And I'm everybody loves JP on Instagram and Twitter, causing a ruckus. <laughs> and you can find me on YouTube, your little dog too. Until next time. Bye. Bye. This episode of Part of Us at Invoke Fancast was researched, written, produced, and edited by Matthew at Culture Inject Productions. The intro and outro music was produced by Wolves and Vincent Tone. We're more than just a podcast. We're a fan community. You can keep up to date on Invoke and chat with other fans by visiting Invoke Craze on Facebook. You can also follow us on YouTube and Instagram at Invoke Craze and Twitter at Part of Us Fancast. Part of Us and Invoke Fancast is not endorsed by Invoke, E1 Music, or Invoke Records and is intended for entertainment and educational purposes only. Invoke and its names, images, and audio clips are registered trademarks and or copyrights of the respective copyright holders. And our hair, of course, is real. We just jazz it up a bit for sex (laughs) appeal. (laughs) (laughs) That part used to tickle me. I'm like, I know that's right. Your hair is real. It's just jazzed up a bit. That's all. It's a little jazzed up. Just a little little jazz. Just a little pizzazz. A little jazzy.